Welcome to TEC2. My name is Bill Bailey. I'm the Hydronics Manager here since about 2004. Today what I want to talk about is just show you the differences between a typical cast iron boiler, which is basically the main boiler in the market right now, versus some of the new high efficiency boilers that have been around for a while, but are still new to a lot of people. First thing here is basically standard cast iron boiler. Alright, what you have here is basically a standard flue. It normally goes into a chimney. In the front of the, sex of the unit, basically we have the burners. And behind here, the actual heat exchanger is a full cast iron block. So basically, it's sections of cast iron that are pressed together. In this application, basically cast iron push nipples. That's where all the water is. In between are sections, the actual heat exchanger, where the gas basically in the flue goes right up in between those sections and transfers the heat to the water that goes into our hydronic system. Burners, right behind this little burner door here. And typical systems, you have a spark igniter and a flame rectification probe, or in the old days they called it a thermocouple. This thing lights, basically you get a call for heat, the vent damper opens, it goes through a few safeties to make sure the water temperature is correct and a few other things, and then we'll light off the burners. Right? This is atmospheric in design because basically this boiler uses room air. So basically in the boiler room there's vents in the doors or whatever to allow air for this boiler to create the combustion, to go between those sections to transfer that heat out of the flame and the fire into the water, circulate through the system, and all our exhaust gas go up and out the flue and out your chimney. These boilers range from about 80 to 85 percent efficient. There are a few new safety controls and outdoor reset controls on these boilers that have been required by the government for the last couple of years, but the basis of this boiler is still a good, standard, high quality cast iron section that does all the heat transfer. Okay. The next boiler, it's not totally new. These boilers have been made in Europe for probably 25 years now, but it's new to the American market. That's sort of if you're considering 2000 new, but in boiler standards in this country, 2000 is a new boiler. This is a high efficiency stainless steel heat exchanger boiler. Okay, as you can see, the difference here, over here we had steel. This is a non-condensing boiler. This boiler condenses at the right water temperatures. So that means the flue temperature is cooler. Thereby we can a lot of times use PVC for the venting material. The thing about a condensing boiler is that what we're actually trying to do is as we're shooting this flame through this heat exchanger is filled with water we're trying to get that temperature so low that we condense the flue gases. And what that means is the flue gases themselves turn back to water. By doing that, we absorb a lot more heat out of that fire. In other words, all those dollars that we're throwing into this heat exchanger, we're trying to extract every dollar we can to put into the system to go out and heat all of our terminal devices, our radium floor and whatever. A little bit different, you see a lot more controls here, okay, it's basically a lot of readouts, a lot of stuff going on, there's a lot of programming. All these high efficiency boilers basically look at outdoor temperatures and work off of what's called reset curves. So on a day when it's 40 degrees outside and you don't need 130 degree or 150 degree of water to heat your system, it might only make 110 degree water. The lower we can keep that water temperature, the more it condenses. The more fuel dollars you save. On the front, yes, there's a little computer board here. This is monitoring everything that's going on with this boiler. It sits and adjusts the flame and everything else to try to maximize the energy efficiency of the unit. Behind the control board, this little door here, you basically have your typical gas valve. Your burner, this is the burner section here, and this, and this little 80,000 BTU boiler, that's the whole heat exchanger. 
I were to take open that door, what you would find is about seven or eight of these in there. Is actually has water inside this coil. Is actually taking, transferring that flue gas into BTUs that we put into the hydronic heating system. Okay, so there's a bit more to these things, but now in this range, if you're in the condensing modes, you're looking at 90 to 95 percent efficient. Okay, so that saves a lot of money in the long run. It's something to look at. That's why a lot of this market is going to the high efficiency boiler. There are different styles of high efficiency boilers. This one here, talk about this is the heat exchanger. This is considered low mass. What we mean by that is really not the weight, it's more how much water is in here. How much water is going to am I using to transfer those BTUs? This is considered low mass. As you can see, this is about 10 feet stainless steel tubing. This might hold two cups of water. Not a lot of water. Gives us a lot of heat transfer very, very quickly. Works well on larger systems, that kind of stuff. Small, big zone systems, all right? Kicker is, you gotta be careful with these because if you try to tick, turn on little zones on and off, you're gonna be cycling this boiler. And as we've discussed in other videos, cycling is no good for any piece of equipment. So what some manufacturers come up with is what we call a large mass high efficiency boiler. And that would be this one over here. If you look on the front, this looks very similar to the other unit over here. Okay, we've got all the gas valve, everything else down there. We have a blower motor. We shoot in the tube. Same thing we have here. We've got our blower motor, we've got our high efficiency gas valves, everything else blowing into, and inside here is a big tube. But, as you can see, this is a big tank, and it is. This is a 55 gallon tank, which has a very large four inch heat exchanger that comes up through the tank. So what happens in this, we get a call for heat, computer, same computer system, looks at it, decides what temperature it should be, and fills up this tank with that temperature water. So now, as our zones are calling, or our apartments are calling, we pull BTUs out of this tank. And until we cool these 55 gallons of BTUs down enough, we don't fire the burner. What does that do for us? I remember earlier we discussed the most efficient boiler is one that's off. Second most efficient boiler is one that's running at a steady state. Just sit there cruising along. The third and the worst is cycling. This eliminates cycling. Remember, we got 55 gallons of BTUs of heat energy that we store here. So a little zone here, a little zone there opens, it takes that, those BTUs away. Doesn't drop the tank temperature at all. Burner says, I don't need to fire. You didn't use any BTUs. You didn't use enough. Keep using BTUs until you bring it down low enough. Then I will recharge. I'm going to run for 10 or 15 minutes or 20 minutes or whatever necessary. But I'm not going to click on for 20 seconds, off for 20 seconds, on for 20 seconds. So this is considered a high efficiency, high mass boiler. So. There is no perfect boiler in the world. If there was, we'd only be selling one. Okay, but there's not. You gotta look at your application. You gotta look at what you're trying to do. If you're looking for a low cost, simple installation, simple system, probably your cast iron's gonna be your best bet. If you're looking for a smaller system, high efficiency, you don't have a lot of zones on it, not a lot of small stuff, maybe a low mass, high efficiency boiler would be your best bet. If you're looking for something that has a lot of small zones, six flats, multiple apartments, that kind of stuff, you don't want to cycle the boiler, now your high mass, high efficiency boiler would be your best bet. So always look at your application before you pick a boiler. There's not one for every, there's not one that covers everything. Thank you.